everyone, and thank you for joining us today. We'll be discussing HR and facilities working together to support workplace lactation. Hi, my name is Cassie Giannikos. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Healthy Horizons. Healthy Horizons operates in 125 cities in North America and is the first company to provide workplace lactation support across the country. We support companies with new baby gifts, lactation room setup and maintenance, and education for new parents. I'd also like to introduce our guest speaker, Elaine. Hi, everybody. My name is Elaine Yang. I'm based here in the Bay Area, California, um, and I've spent a little over 10 years now in various HR and people team roles. Most recently, I spent a number of years at Lever, which was a small at the time, but mid-sized startup here in the Bay Area um, as a part of their people and HR teams. It's where I met Cassie, Healthy Horizons, and also Timaj, uh, our third presenter. And currently, I'm a part of Atlassian's global leadership team for our TA business partners. And so I primarily work with our recruiting teams um, to really solve sort of the business challenges that are ahead for us as we grow. And I think what's been really important to me and why this webinar is exciting to me is, you know, the most meaningful part of my work is really growing companies, helping them scale, but also maintaining a very human centric experience and certainly lactating um, parents are a huge part of that. So happy to be here. Thanks, Cassie. Thank you so much, Elaine. And our other guest speaker is Tamaj. Hi, hello everyone. Yes, my name is Timaj Bukadli. Thank you so much for having me today, Cassie and Elaine. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm really excited to talk about how facilities and HR can really work together to make an amazing experience for all working moms uh, and talking today really about the lactation program. It's very near and dear to me. Um, I am in the past uh, worked in facilities for a very long time, specifically working with uh, with companies such as Figma and Lever, helping to support their lactation programs. And now currently I'm helping to support other technology companies on the real estate and workplace side. So really excited for our conversation today. And with that, we'll dive right into the conversation. Do you have any examples of how facilities, HR and Healthy Horizons can work together to start the program? Yeah, I think there's the policy side and then also the facility side. So too much maybe um, you can go first with the really workplace um, facilities. Yeah, I think from a facilities perspective, one, um, identifying, first of all, identifying a location, right, um, where, you know, new moms will need for lactation purposes. Um, you know, hopefully it's not a closet. Um, you want it to be, which I will say candidly, ours was actually a closet, but that was, we were limited in, you um, we were limited in space, right? And so you had to work with what you have. But, you know, I think uh, being a new mom, you want it to be a comfortable space for, for them to feel like that they have, that they can pump. Um, and, you know, I think for me personally, uh, just having a space that was private and no one had access to was in itself a luxury. Um, so I think that's first and foremost, just having the right facil facilities in place to be able to support that new mom. Uh, secondly, I would say uh, one thing in partnership with HR is just uh, when they're returning back from maternity leave, uh, whatever you could do to provide like a transitionary period for them. Um, I think as a new mom, you know, you already have a lot of stress because you have a new newborn at home who's probably keeping you up very late at night. And so having to think about, you know, work plus you know, uh, you know, your child at home, it is a lot to, to, um, to, to come together. And so I think for me personally, I think having a transitionary period, working with HR, working with your manager in terms of what that actually looks like um, so that you could slowly get up to speed, I think is going to also ease a lot of just like angst on the mom's side because they already have a lot going on. Yeah. Um. I don't, I don't know if I can say it any better than what Timaj has already shared, but, you know, I don't have any children. And so I think partnering with, with you all those years ago, it was definitely a learning experience for, for me. I didn't have my own experiences, right, to, to inform or guide some of the build out that we had. But I would say we didn't shy away from 
doing the work, doing the research, even if like I was deer in headlights there. I think part of human-centered design is really asking, asking the questions, interviewing parents. Maybe I think we interviewed someone at the time who had teenagers, so they were well past the newborn phase, but really collecting as many perspectives as possible. Ask about the hard stories, right, of what was really difficult or really frustrating um, for for parents or lactating moms or parents um, in other places and ask for a lot of help. I think there's a lot of open sourced HR groups that are online, your benefits providers, teams like Healthy Horizons who have so much, I think such a large variety of customers and clients that you've seen. Probably ha- you've seen all the different kinds of lactation rooms um, that have been set up. And so I think um, really digging in and casting a wide net is, was key, at least for me, um, when we got started doing this. Yeah. And I remember you had really good questions when you were setting up your program. Um, <laughs> also, I didn't know anything, so I had to ask all of the questions. <laughs> but that's good, though, because you were so good about educating yourself and learning and, you know, really looking at it from the parent's perspective um, so that they have a great experience. You know, another thing Healthy Horizons can help with is kind of helping cut out some of the research, especially if people are strapped for time, like telling you exactly which chair or which fridge is best for the room and also helping maintain it. Because I've seen some really gorgeous lactation rooms set up, but they need to be maintained. So every cohort of parents has that same wonderful experience as the first. Exactly. I would also add to not overlook the logistics of maintaining, mm-hmm. uh, overlook the logistics of the room itself. Um, I think there were n- numerous times in my past where I would want to go pump. And unfortunately, there was someone who was actually in there because there was a lack of conference rooms. And so I think there was a, a matter of one working really closely with HR and facilities, but also IT and ensuring that that specific conference room is blocked off so that no one can actually use it. And it's really dedicated for for that uh, mom who needs to use it. And so I think just creating a sense of like safety of like, okay, I I have the ability and capability to use it when I need to, because, you know, you're in the middle of meetings, you have a lot going on. And so just having that availability to use it when you need is, I think, so important and critical for the mom so that they feel supported um, from, from, from the organization. Mm-hmm. And then from a legal perspective, it's also smart to make sure, you know, moms have first access because if they don't have access, there could actually be a violation and a potential fine each time that parent can access the space. And um, so what I see is companies, if it is a shared space, um, making it only bookable by the parents. And then everyone else kind of comes second if it happens to be open. But like you said, Tamaj, having a dedicated space is really the best way to go. So switching gears a little bit, um, what are some of the policies that need to be in place? Yeah, um, I can take a first pass uh, at that if that works. Mm-hmm. In terms of policies, I think Timaj, you just mentioned, you know, the some of the infrastructure to like make sure that only moms can book the rooms and no one's trying to take calls from um, from the room is is key. From the HR side, I think if you're on the people team or on on the HR team, setting up the policy not only for returning to work um, matters a lot, but also of course the parental leave policy that comes before that. Right? What can parents expect for how long they can actually go out? Um, Maybe they're on disability or they need to be on bed rest before their actual due date. The type of delivery also matters and impacts the timelines. How long are they legally obligated to? What kinds of payments are they obligated for from from the government, but also from the company? How long unpaid can they go? I think it is really critical um, for, for people teams to be the subject matter expert there and to really guide folks through that. So I'm going to list off a couple of different things that I had found useful, um, and of course, you know, I think this is all available online, but there's a lot of open source financial modeling tools uh, online as well to help you if you're setting up a policy for the first time, just trying to see like, what's the financial impact of X number of people going out on leave? Um, there's crowdsourced leave data 
uh, and benchmarks. And so you can see what other companies of your size and stage or revenue are, are offering to expecting parents. Um, there's verbiage and templates for policies available online as well. I found Startup HR to be a really key um, group to collect a lot of this data. And I also want to plug community-oriented um, groups like legal aid societies, legal aid at work societies. Those are all local. Um, they have a lot of really great, easy to digest leave resources, and they, they'll kind of interpret the legal jargon for you in a way that's really easy to understand uh, and com locally compliant. Um, and so those are probably the couple of resources that I would point folks to when it comes to setting up the policies. But of course, the most important thing is making sure that you're interpreting what your company, your organization's character, personality, voices, and make sure that um, you make it unique to how you plan on supporting, supporting the parents. Those are really fantastic tips, Elaine. Um, I would just add that also partner with your legal team to make sure you're reviewing all the laws and you're covered in, in those aspects. You know, some of the laws you should look at are Fair Labor Standards Act, the Fairness for Breastfeeding Mothers Act, and the brand new Pump Act, which is also on the federal level. Also, the majority of states have additional laws um, at their level as well. If you'd like to see a list of state laws as a starting point, we'll add a link to that in the comments. Um, in addition to that, there are some local ordinances like what we have here in San Francisco. So, you know, there's a lot of layers to it and it's always the most restrictive laws 